and gents, boys and girls, geeks and fan boys and girls around the globe. Welcome back to the Vigilant Geek Podcast. Uh, we are currently doing a science fiction month here at the Vigilant Geek. Um, so we'd like to welcome you all here for that. Uh, week three of Science Fiction Week. Uh, or Science Fiction Month, rather. Pardon me. Uh, we will be discussing uh, science fiction films. So, uh, first and foremost, uh, my name is Andrew Puzak of Vigilant Geek Media. And with me, as always, is my comic book partner in crime. Oh, hold an arm of Vigilant Geek Media. Yeah. Yep. He's holding arm and he's back. He's with me here again this week. So, uh, like I said, we're uh, going to be getting into some science fiction flicks here. Some of our favorites. Now, there are uh, a p- absolute plethora of great sci-fi flicks out there. So, um, you know, we really hope that we do the genre some justice today. But by no means do we feel like we uh, are going to be able to include everything. But, you know, we got all kinds of uh, great epic sci-fi to talk about uh everything from the matrix to blade runner to terminator to alien to 2001 a space odyssey and everything in between so uh i suppose without further ado uh let's get into talking about some of these great flicks let's talk about some aliens let's talk about some uh evil robots some uh, foreign galaxies, alternate dimensions. Let's get into it, man. Yeah. So, um, I'm a pretty big fan of the Alien series. As am I. That's probably my personal. Well, I'm a big Blade Runner guy too, but but probably my 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 personal favorite uh, uh, sci-fi movie franchise ever would probably be Alien. Yeah, the first movie was very much a horror. It's like a sci-fi horror, really. Which I love. And then it was, you know, because it was just the one alien. And then by the time the second movie rolls around, which was my favorite, there's a bunch of them. But then you got the space marines, like... And they're pretty badass. Just shooting them up until, like, pretty much all of them, except for Ripley, gets overrun. Right. And then what was the, what's the name of the corporation? They just call themselves the corporation. They I wanna, forget the name. There's, I think there's a name. I, wanna, I don't remember. They want the the egg of the aliens for itself so that they can go ahead and breed their own. Right. As a chemo, as like a biological weapon. You just have this hive of like these things that'll like destroy you pretty much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um ruthless brutal animals that's what these aliens are yeah it it they they um as as much as you know they're supposed to be like an intelligent life form like they're very like animalistic uh very much like you know uh predatory you know and we'll get into the predator you know momentarily here but yeah the aliens uh are very vicious these you know um what do they actually call them? They have the name for them. Xenomorphs. Uh, yeah, that's it. The xenomorphs. Um, well, speaking of xenomorphs, you know how you sort of see. I don't know, have you seen Prometheus? I haven't. I oh, haven't. okay. Well, at the end of Prometheus, you see like a little Easter egg, um, which is really the only thing in Prometheus within the whole movie that really ties in with the alien movies at all. So, you know, Prometheus is supposed to be this uh, prequel to the alien movies. Um, but you, except for that little clip of the xenomorph at the very end of the movie, you don't you don't really see anything that even pertains to the alien movies. So it has a lot of fans right now that is kind of leaving everybody scratching their heads. Well, there's a reason for this. You know how Star Wars kind of ha- started out with episodes four, five, and six, and then they filled in episodes one, two, and three after that. Well, uh, I just read an article online uh, from a very viable source uh, stating that Prometheus was sort of like the episode one of the Alien movie series. So in other words, there's going to be a Prometheus 2, a Prometheus 3, and then it's supposed to sort of uh, explain the... Like, the uh, 
the lineage of how the xenomorphs were formed biologically because apparently it was like these two other alien races like created it somehow um so there's like a shitload oh, pardon my french there's a crud load of explaining to do uh but apparently yeah they're all gonna tie into this giant massive movie uh series so and then like, so the first one there were no xenomorphs what were they just dealing with like like abandoned alien technology or something um well it was more more or less uh like yeah it, it was abandoned there, there was like an abandoned ship uh on this planet but there was uh there was life they found life too and 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 there was this uh different species of alien uh, on this planet that they encountered and, and in the end ended up killing almost everyone. But uh, basically... Was it like a xenomorph? Or was well, it like here's the thing. I think uh, it, it wasn't anything like a xenomorph. It was like this giant, like, jacked, like, white creature that kind of looked like a human, but, like, it had, like, a different-looking face, like, different, like, eyes that, like, were just crazy-looking. But, um... I think that th this species of alien from Prometheus is in part responsible for at least some of the DNA for the xenomorphs. If not that, at least, you know, in some way, shape or form is responsible uh, for creating the xenomorphs. So they've brought us all the way back to uh, the creators of this monster uh cosmic killing machine you know known as the xenomorph so um basically us as fans we're going to have to wait uh for prometheus you know the second and third installment i think they're calling it something else they're not calling it prometheus 2 anymore they changed the name like last week and i don't remember but um there is actually a different uh motion picture company that is trying to make more alien movies that take place after the fourth alien movie resurrection i never saw resurrection either you didn't okay well resurrection was pretty decent as well um but yeah you got you got another movie company that's trying to like work on the opposite end of the story but they can't do anything with their project until prometheus 2 hits the theaters so I don't know why that is. That's just something I read. Um, it's kind of a mess right now, but I think when you know these movies like finally come out and like you know they've laid the groundwork for like this whole giant epic tale, like I think it's going to be really really cool. Well, I'll have to at least check it out. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something I've been super pumped about for a while. So absolutely, we'll have to do like a marathon when the time comes. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on to uh, another sci-fi franchise that falls right in line with Alien and things like that. They've actually been pitted against each other, Alien vs. Predator, uh, in the Alien vs. Predator movie, I don't know as well they... as the comics. But uh, yeah, Predator. I don't know why they haven't made a Predator 3 yet. Each Predator movie kind of is like a microcosm one in itself. You like... Oh, sure. You run into the the alien race, which they're like they're hunters and warriors, and they get like the cloaking technology and beam weapons and the, yeah. the super knives, you know. And and then in the first one, it's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger versus the one of these predators, and it uh, it gets kind of crazy. And then he ends <laughs> up winning out at the end. And then the second one, if good. it bleeds, we could kill it. <laughs> Get to the chopper, do it now! <laughs> and you just son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah, just sorry. I said I, I just had to throw in a, a few little quotes there from Arnold from that movie. I don't know, they're classic, man. I mean, that the Predator is probably my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. That or the Terminator, one or the other. Like, you know. He's had so many amazing ones, but Predator Two was wicked good too. It was with Danny Glover. Yeah, Danny Glover was amazing. In it was movie. awesome. He's become like a D actor lately. Yeah, it's which sad. you know, it's too bad because I mean, I I loved Lethal Weapon. I loved all those movies for what they were. 
Um, and, you know, I think at some point, you know, at least I would love to do like a like an old school, like action movie podcast at some point, like and talk about like the old buddy cop movies and stuff like that. But um, no, back on topic, you know, uh, he was on point with Predator 2. You know, it took place like it was a more urban setting. Yeah, it was this gang war with like the Jamaicans and somebody else. It was pretty good. They had the um, they had a lot of cool looking weapons. And then this one couldn't blow himself up like the one in uh, Predator 1 did, even though he tried. And uh, it was good. I mean, it was good. It was unique. It's just making me wonder why it's taken 30 years to actually like do a true sequel and not some stupid alien predator mashup where you're just like, oh, this teen gets beat up when delivering pizza. <laughs> Aliens and predators. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it it is kind of strange because nowadays in Hollywood, you know, they'll make a sequel or, or, or a trilogy or whatever out of just about anything. And, you know, for something like a no brainer like that, like, yeah, there hasn't been a predator three yet. Uh, yeah, we could make one and, and could pretty much take place anywhere and star anyone. And it would probably make a ton of money. So yeah. Um, very odd that that has not occurred yet. No, they could just be like, oh, the Predator's in the Middle East with all the war and everything going on. But there you go. That'd be perfect. Billion, billions of dollars right there. <laughs> Lots of money. You just you, All you need to do is just pick like a pretty hot action actor right now. Like somebody who's been in a lot of action flicks. You put like Tom Hardy against the Predator or something. That'd be cool. Or like Danny DeVito. Maybe <laughs> we'll get him a, get him a Wolverine costume. No, just have him dressed up like the Penguin from Batman Returns. He'd be he'd be vicious looking. Like I wouldn't fuck with him dressed like that. I wouldn't fuck with Danny DeVito anyways. Like you know, he'll get you. He's the kind of guy that always gets the last laugh. Yeah, he's he's doing very well for himself. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Um, that brings us to, uh, our next, uh, our next sci-fi flick here, uh, Blade Runner. Yeah. We've talked about this flick a little bit before, uh, particularly, uh, in our movie podcast we had back a few months ago with, uh, Nathan Burke and Mark Gallagher with us. Um, but yeah, uh, Blade Runner is probably, geez, it's probably my favorite sci-fi movie. You know, uh, and the funny thing was the first few times I watched it, like I knew it was a cult classic and I knew that it had such a huge following. So I wanted to check it out, you know, because I was really becoming like this, you know, movie geek as a whole, a big time movie buff, particularly sci-fi though, and uh, in horror. But yeah, the first few times I watched Blade Runner, I just wasn't digging it. I just could not, I didn't understand why people liked it i was just like this movie sucks like there's nothing going on it's just you know but i didn't really like i didn't read into the backstory at all um with the androids and then like i i i didn't even know that like you know rutger hauer was like you know the po most powerful nexus six or whatever uh, you know what i mean like like i didn't know enough about the backstory and then i realized i was watching the director's cut which is like the worst uh, version of Blade Runner that you can see. I I don't know why the director's cut was 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 you know made that way, made so horribly. But you want to see the final cut, uh, if at all possible, because it, for some reason in the director's cut they like totally cut out like I don't know seventy five percent of the action sequences. So you know. There you go, right there. That, that was a big reason. Once I once I watched the final cut, then I said, "Oh well, you know, this is what I was missing." Now I get why this is a good movie, and it really is. Uh, so ahead of its time, so futuristic. It's based off of uh, Philip K. Dick's uh, "Do Electric Sheep" or what is it? Something Dream of Electric Sheep. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? That's uh, the name of the book that Blade Runner is based off of. Um, 
Obviously, it just as a very quick plot synopsis for those who have not seen the movie, uh, Harrison Ford plays you know the the main Blade Runner of the movie. The Blade Runners are these uh, uh, law enforcement officers that are in charge of uh, apprehending uh, all androids. Uh, because after uh, a, a revolt on an off-world colony, uh, the government decides that you know androids are now outlawed, and uh, the Blade Runners are tasked with you know testing out people to see if they are an android by this series of questions. I think it's called a Void Comp Test or something like that. Uh, and, and then apprehending them. So it's Harrison Ford chasing after these very dangerous rogue Nexus six androids, which are, you know, like the, you know, the most, you know, the dangerous. Yeah. The most, the most dangerous androids. So it turns into like a really cool movie, really, uh, really well done. And like I said, very ahead of its time. I think it came out in 82, uh, the concepts were much further ahead time wise. So, uh, yeah, Blade Runner is one of the classics, one of the sci fi's you gotta see. Uh, next up, we have Jupiter Ascending. Yeah, so this is a sci fi film done by the Wachowskis, the same people who did The Matrix. Oh, yeah. And it, pretty much what they're telling is um, a kind of different kind of story. The storyline is based on this girl who ends up, um, her mother is a Russian immigrant and she was born in the States. And they pretty much just, all they do is clean houses of like rich people to make money. And as it turns out, there's this intergalactic like aristocrats and uh, bureaucracy and like, the, like, there's like this royal family of the ga- of like the universe. Hmm. And the one that was the queen wrote into her will that her clone or the person, any person born with the exact same genetic code as her would end up inheriting the earth and like a bunch of other like territories. Cause like in this world, planets are treated like property. And anyways, the, uh, the other royal family members want the earth to themselves. So they try to have her cam kidnapped and killed and the police have this like werewolf hybrid who's played by uh Channing Tatum and he ends up being her bodyguard for most of the movie (laughs) that's actually kind of a funny concept and then they yeah and then they got uh you know mech battles and stuff so it it was really interesting I thought it was different I liked it It, uh, right on man it's I have a, not seen a it, but it, kind of sci-fi. it sounds pretty, pretty sweet though. Like a movie I'd really like. It's I, fun. I have to check it out. The, um, the action scenes are badass. Cool. Well, if it's got badass action sequences, if the plot sucks, just as long as, you know, there's some good action, maybe, you know, some nice cleave going on, then, you know, I'm all set. It's a good movie. Um, and speaking of that, uh, action sequences and cleavage, that brings us to the Terminator movie franchise, which is another one of the most popular sci-fi franchises out there today. Also one of my personal favorites. Um, you have Arnold, of course. Mm. Arnold like really was like the 80s king of sci-fi. It's crazy. He was He did Terminator... He did Predator. He did Running Man. He did Total Recall. What else did he? I mean, he did so many like awesome sci-fi's. Yeah, he really did. It's pretty. It was pretty awesome. Like you know, like like pe- people can never take that away from Arnold. Like you know, Arnold's a very like laughable figure nowadays. You know, but seriously, like that he, is he's great in action flicks. Like True Lies was amazing. Oh God, yeah, that was one of the overall like most epic action movies ever oh yeah dude the part where he like they give him the sodium pentothal so he's like all telling the truth and stuff and then he yeah. tells the guy everything he's going to do he's just like i'm going to throw that scalpel through that guy's head and take that saw and cut your throat with it yeah. like, oh how are you going to do that and he's just like the cuffs i picked them 
<laughs> the cops, I picked them. <laughs> and then he does everything he said he's going to do. And like Jamie Lee Curtis is just like freaking out. Like, my husband's a spy. Oh, my God. She plays a good, nervous wife, though. It was a And then there's movie. that guy, uh, Bill Paxton, who's actually one of like my favorite B-list actors. He's been in like so much stuff. Like He was even awesome in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but uh, he plays like that sleaze, like guy that's pretending to be like in the CIA, but he's really just a sleaze, like trying to go around sleeping with people's wives. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. She's trying to like you know go Make out her with life him. Exciting, more exciting. When really she's married to the actual like secret agent Arnold, who's out there battling evil every day. He cannot be home, comforting <laughs> her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> These women, they just think that we're around to comfort them, but we got to go out and fight the bad guys too, and use lots of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's true lies, man. Yeah. Uh, good shit, but I tell you, um, I think Terminator's been all over the place lately, though. Well, the early ones are obviously the ones to watch. Uh, when it gets to Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines, it's still watchable, but it's not very good. Yeah, I don't know. I I I I liked it, but I didn't love it like the first two. And then you get anywhere past that, you get to Salvation, and then you get to uh, the TV series that was on briefly, and it just kind of went. Well, Wee! one just came out called Genesis, <laughs> and apparently it just turns the whole series on its head. Yeah, well, I haven't seen that yet, and I am like, you know, I've been in you know, a relationship with my girlfriend and she has been like dead set against watching Genesis. And I'm like, I want to watch Genesis. And like, I just, I have to watch it on my own sometime. But have you seen it yet? No, I haven't seen it yet. I, I kind of try right, to we stay need to, away from the new Terminator flicks. Well, yeah, but this one is supposed to be different. It's apparently it's supposed to be good. It got really good reviews overseas. It didn't get good reviews in America, but no. apparently like overseas, like it blew up. So we got to check it out, you know? We're going to have to check out Genesis, see if it's any good. Yeah. We would not be Vigilant Geeks if we didn't. That's true. So, moving on, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, that new Netflix series, Sense8, that I, we've been hearing so many good things about. So, Sense8 is written produ and produced by the Wachowskis and the guy who did Babylon 5, uh, J. Oh. Michael Straczynski. Nice, okay. Um, it's a story that tells the story of eight individuals who live throughout the world, and the only thing they have in common is that they were all born at the exact same time in the same day, and they, they're all psychically linked and can feel like what other people feel and can use the skills and knowledge that everyone else knows, um, and it turns out there's this shady government organization, and the, the There show, always is. The show starts out, like, all of them feel something profound when a woman that they like they don't really know like blows her head off and it turns out that she was a sensate too and then they all learn there and then they're after this and um anyways there's this company that's trying to find this sensate and kill them off because they're doing experiments on them because mm. like one of them will end up like collapsing during a parade next thing you know they're doing x-rays on your head and part of what makes them special is the two hemispheres of their brain combine they're not separate and hmm. they're allowed to do like they're allowed to talk to each other over great distances and feel like uh, different emotions and sensations that the other people feel. And it, it's been pretty good. Um, hmm. The first season was OK. I mean, I don't know if you're a pervert and you like naked people like oh, I of, love naked people. There's tons of sex. Oh, but, well, that's all you need to tell me. Is there alien sex? No, but I mean, like, you got gay sex, and then you got... Yeah, uh, well, I'm not into that either, but... Yeah, yeah, and then you get the lesbian sex, and then you uh, get the... Oh, that's good, though. And then you get the straight sex. So they got, eh. you know, <laughs> sex for all types, I guess. What about, like, animals and stuff like that? No, I don't think so. All right, well, I suppose they have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Just Netflix is just, like get carried away with what they can do <laughs> well yeah i mean they're, uh i mean they're like tr clearly trying to compete with like hbo with like for the mature content oh yeah it's part of their original series to keep things all spicy and people coming back and i I, I think you know well hbo has always been a powerhouse but uh well, they're doing real well right now and their their original series are really good and most of them are kind of mini series so it allows them to get some real big names to be on their shows 
Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Like uh, True Detective. Um, they've had some huge names on that show. They did uh, first season Matthew McConaughey and uh, Woody, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, and it, it was fantastic. And then uh, second season, they had a bunch of good people. They had Colin Farrell, uh, Vince Vaughn, a couple of other big names. Yeah, uh, that show, I've heard so many good things. I have only seen the first season, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, among the other you know, uh, not to get on too big of a tangent, but some of the other series that HBO has have just, I think, you know, shows like Game of Thrones and stuff like that, like, they're always going to have those, like, big powerhouse shows, and, and they're, they're shows that everybody wants to see, and they've, they just produce quality, so I think, like, Netflix and HBO like are going to be two things that compete for a long time because HBO has that staying power with just the quality of shows that they put out. Uh, it's sort of like quality is combating quantity in a way. Well, people are just more picky and choosy. I mean, yeah. the only thing that sucks about HBO programming is you either have to have cable or like... Or like, order I, it. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know if they have HBO Go anymore. I don't know either. I don't know if they have any digital things that allow you to see. It'd be interesting to find out. Um, but anyways, just to get back on task, um, if you're a Netflix person, I've just recently become a huge Netflix junkie, so I'm going to check this out. I love naked people. Uh, Sense8. Yeah, it's going to be a great out. time checking out some naked people. And there's apparently some sci-fi stuff that goes on there too. But it's mainly naked people. Check it out. Yeah, both. And uh, speaking of naked people, one actress that I don't know about you, but I would just love to see naked someday is Charlize Theron. And a sci-fi film that she did that was just spectacular is Aeon Flux. Yeah, she did this movie a long time ago. Um, the storyline's pretty great. So I guess society gets to a point where uh, there's this disease and they can't cure the disease. What they do is they, every time a person dies, a person is cloned in secret and put into the um, the regular frame of things. And then they keep recloning this doctor guy who, um, who, who is like the figurehead of the state, but he's the only person who's researching a cure to this disease. And then there's Aeon Flux. She's somebody special who's genetically engineered from the guy who really runs the things in this weird looking blimp. Hmm. Aeon is like the like the superhuman, the one that they clone and they don't use her very often. And she's fighting for the resistance and stuff, but meanwhile they're trying to find out what's going on and like how to develop a cure. Cause they're they're just, just like the city state in the middle of nowhere and this the disease is just like a really I don't know. I don't know if it sterilized everybody or something or what, but there's no natural birth. And, um, but and there's still like test tube babies and stuff. Right? Oh yeah. No, yeah. they just, they just clone people cause they can't have oh, okay. any new original people. So the people just keep getting cloned. I see. It's pretty good. Mm hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. Well, all right. And I enjoyed it too. Because, I mean, I enjoy anything uh, Charlize Theron happens to stare in. Uh, she was actually in Prometheus, too. She played, like, the badass captain of the ship that, you know, didn't take any shit and didn't trust the android. Just like, you know, Ripley never trusts that shifty little android, you know. Uh, they're always trouble. But uh, anyways, just, um, like, uh, just like Ripley. I love Ripley. She's just the token strong woman. Strong woman. Stronger than a man. We got the Matrix. Yeah, the let's list. talk. Let's Next. talk a little bit about the Matrix. Let's mix it up a little bit here. We'll talk about Ka Keanu and how he knows Kung Fu. The first movie was pretty iconic, but like nobody knew where they were going to take the what direction they were going to take the series. I sure as hell a, didn't. No, everyone like everyone was guessing because like the fact that like there's something called the Matrix Matrix at all is just confusing as shit. Well, you think about it for a little while, and it's it's kind of trippy to think about how like you know it's just this projection it, it, almost. It's like an optical illusion, and and the reality of of you know 
what we actually live in, you know, in the movie is just squalor and filth and and just a, an apocalyptic scenario. But no one can really like, you know, no one no one has a clue. Everyone's everyone's everyone thinks that they're in the world. Yeah. Instead, they're in a tank full of goop. Yeah. <laughs> with a electrical wire plugged into your brain. It's a pretty, you know, trippy concept to think about. It's pretty cool, though. And you got these agents, and they're chasing after Keanu. And they're actually computer programs. And they're all like, Mr. Anderson, you need to come with us. <laughs> oh, it was... I don't know. I'd say it's one of those classic. It's it's hard to make it in sci-fi. Like, if it sucks, it's so bad. Oh yeah, it's such a hard thing to get like right, you know. But when it's on, when it's on, it's on. When you have like a cutting edge idea, I mean, like like the Matrix is very cutting edge. Um, and like a lot of the other titles we've already been discussing, uh, when you have something that you know is going to respond well to the public like and, and you do it right and you project it on screen properly it is just such a beautiful thing because it's really going to make your viewers like really think that's what sci-fi does is it just makes you think like deeply about things that we cannot control but it's just I don't know about you but for me it's almost addicting to think about you know alternate universes and different dimensions and life on other far off galaxies and things like that. So, um, you know, I think it all kind of boils down to like, what's your plot going to be? I mean, certainly like casting and, and the actual shooting of the film plays a role as well. But, uh, you got, I mean, it all starts with that plot with the writing behind it. I feel, I don't know. It's been good. I mean, The Matrix is an original idea. Like, the Wachowski brothers, they're really influenced very heavily by Japanese uh, stuff like manga and anime. Yeah. And that- and, and if you watch enough manga and anime, you, you, you get that, that sense from watching The Matrix. Oh, sure. Very much so with their other movie, Jupiter Ascending, too. It's just this different kind of, this different way of looking at things and making these different kinds of stories. Out of the box. Yeah. That, didn't they do that one on like Cloud Atlas? Like, I never seen it, but I, like, it looks, seems sci fi. What is it? Cloud Atlas? Never heard of it. Yeah. Well, hmm. It's another one that they did. I haven't seen it yet. I didn't get amazing reviews, but sometimes not everything they do, like, people like. Like, I loved their version of Speed Racer. Speed Racer was amazing. I haven't seen that one. It was good? Oh, yeah. It was like the first thing I ever bought on Blu-ray. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome, man. I love that movie. I'll have to check that out. And uh, speaking of cartoons that have been turned into movies, uh, let's talk a little Transformers. Yeah. So (laughs) as a whole, yeah, as a fan of Transformers, I'm not a big fan of these movies. There's been four of them so far, and, like, they just, it gets bad. Like, at first you think, like, oh, maybe they're going to take some of the uh, the canon and and his story and use it towards these movies, but it's just like, oh, it's the awkward teenage kid, and we don't know why he's special, but he's in the movie. Shia, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, and then... Um, and then they just end up brawling with the Decepticons anyway, and then the, like the human beings have little or nothing to do with like the actual story whatsoever. Hmm. You know, I never saw any of those movies. I was never into the toys, and I hated the cartoon. Uh, and I, I, I hated the toys. I don't know why. I just did. Um, See, I loved the toys in the cartoon. I was I was all into it. Hmm. Yeah, the only thing I know about the Transformer movies is a little bit of celebrity gossip I heard about Shia. Apparently, he spread this big rumor that he uh, had sex with Megan Fox on set. And uh, apparently, it wasn't true. She denied it to everyone, and apparently, he made himself into like big fool for a while. Uh, well, yeah, well, geez. Like, he just he plagiarized somebody. He made an independent film, which was... A complete plagiary of somebody's uh, graphic novel, and then, <laughs> and it was like obvious, and and it's just like, just so shitty, man. Yeah, so sad, man. It's too bad. 
So you weren't a fan of the movies. No, they're bad. The special effects were good. I don't know. They tried to fill it with a lot of tits and ass and explosions and fighting robots. Mm -hmm. And it stays okay for a while. But like, if, then you get like bloodthirsty, like rage monster Optimus Prime. And he's just like, I'm going to cut your fucking head off and shit like that. <laughs> he just starts like saying real psycho things. And um, yeah, other than that, it's just a big action mess. I don't know. It's like if you want to like just kind of check out like and look at explosions and stuff for two hours then that's probably a good movie for you to check out but then they just rebooted the franchise with mark Wahlberg. yeah yeah and then like i guess like the storyline takes like the transformers are being hunted by the government now and and then uh they're using scrap metal from the defeated decepticons to make robots of their own and then like they turned on their masters a little bit and then there's this bounty hunter which had captured like Dinobots, and it was just like, wow, this is a very thin plot. <laughs> Probably one of those plots that are uh, uh, put into place to uh, perhaps uh, sell toys. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, the toys were fun because it's like they're also a puzzle. Like, oh, I'm going to turn this person into a robot. They're just, there was always just some appeal for me there, you know? And the cartoons were good. The cartoons had good backstory and everything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, not so much with the with the movies. I mean, I don't know. If there's nothing else out, I'll probably still go see them. But well, there you have it. that into it, you know? Transformers. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all we have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um... You know, I would not buy a Transformers uh, action figure for a dollar. But you know what I would buy for a dollar is a copy of RoboCop, which is the next fl film they're going to discuss. Yeah, those are good. The, the first movie was great. The second movie, the second and third movies were uh, partly written by Frank Miller. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. No, he like, I think he had mostly something that... The second one's my favorite RoboCop because you got the fake drugs going around, mm -hmm. the nuke, and then you got the the defense contracts and showing like what happens when like corporations end up bu like buying the government off and going too crazy, and then you got the RoboCop and he's he's fighting to stay like remain human, you know, <laughs> but he's still like completely badass. Stay out of trouble. I never saw the third one, really. I heard it was cheesy. Like, there was, like, a samurai fighting robot or something stupid. You know, I never saw the third one either, so I can't even say. I've only seen the first two, and then I saw the new one, the reboot they just did with uh, Sam Jackson and uh, uh, what's-his-face, uh, who played Jim Gordon in Dark Knight. Uh, I always forget his name. Is he the one who played RoboCop? I thought it was somebody different. No, no, no. He played uh, the, the scientist who, uh, you know, turned the main character into RoboCop, uh, Murphy. I forget the actor's name who played Murphy. But uh, no, uh, the scientist was played by uh, the guy who played Jim Gordon in the Dark Knight trilogy. I, his name is escaping me at the moment. Uh, I can't think of it. Gary Oldman? Gary Oldman, yeah. He was in that? Yeah, he played the scientist. Huh. But yeah, um, I liked the reboot. It was a little different from uh the original but it wasn't bad it wasn't bad no i i liked it a lot uh I, I still like the original uh better you know it's just it's just such a classic movie i don't know there's just something about it uh but you know uh the new one was good too they they sort of did something where uh you know half of his actual body is like a machine whereas I, I don't think it was like that cut and dry in the first, in the original. I think it was, you know, he was a cyborg, but he, did, he didn't have like half of his body missing. Well, the first one was like bleak. Oh, yeah. Well, the first the... one was wicked bleak because he was just written off as dead by his family. Yeah. Where it... in the second one, he fights to like finally get back in like touch with them. Yeah. And he does. He gets shot. Like Peter Weller gets shot like 50 
freaking times the beginning of that movie. Like, and then like jackhammers on the joints <laughs> just being torn apart. Yeah. Into pieces. Red Foreman's just in the background like laughing. <laughs> he was an awesome, awesome bad guy, by he the way. He was amazing. Kurtwood Smith. That was the actor. Yeah. Red, Red Foreman. Oh, RoboCop's back. I'm going to shoot that dumbass. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that was good. It's good. But yeah, I wonder if they'll do anything with RoboCop in the future. I've tried reading some of the comics that Frank Miller's done, and I just couldn't keep up with it. We didn't catch your interest, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a part of my life, too, where I wasn't really reading all that much anyways. So, oh, okay, yeah. So I was just like... I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it's good. RoboCop, uh, you know, I think like Dynamite or IDW, one of those like labels that does a lot of the pop culture stuff, they still put out... Uh, Terminator and RoboCop comic books and I know they still do Transformers and Transformers G. and GI Joe all of that. I think it's I think it's Dynamite. If it's not Dynamite it's IDW. I think they it's between the two. But um apparently there's a pretty I don't know. The the Ninja Turtles run looks kind of interesting. I just if I'm going to dive into it I need to make sure I can get my hands on a good like 10 copies to see if it's decent. Yeah. But, I mean, it looks good. They're trying to develop the line still. Like, Laird is still part of it. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes with that. But, uh, yeah, they do a lot of pop culture stuff, them IDWs and Dynamites. And I, I think because that's pretty much what primarily what they do, I'm not really into, like, you know, reading books like that of pop culture icons that have already been established, but, you know, are, you know, in regards to comics, like, you know, haven't been around for that long or, or maybe they have, but still like, you know, like I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely like more into like, you know, the prominent titles, but I, you know, I can't imagine them being bad. No. Well, I don't know. I always try to keep my ear to the ground for some stuff. Like there are a lot of comics that I'll just honestly just pick up to see if they're any good and go with the, go with the little run for it with it for a little while, you know, yeah. see how it works out. If I like it, I keep it in my stack. If it's not that great, and then I just, you know, cut bait with it, still have the books. Shed a few tears and move on with your life. Yeah, I don't even <laughs> think it gets that dramatic, honestly. <laughs> Lately, I've been reading so much stuff for the podcast that uh, it's been kind of hard. Like, I'll get re done reading with one stack, and then, like, then I'll have, like, a whole, like, Wednesday's worth of books to read directly after that. Yeah. But uh, it's been good. I don't know. I'm happy with what uh, Marvel has been putting out. And they've also been putting stuff like like issues every two weeks. They're doing that again, which is nice. They're doing that with Spider-Man? They're doing that with Spider-Man. They're doing that with Iron Man right now. Oh, they should be doing that with Iron Man. Iron Man and Spider-Man, and probably Wolverine, uh, but not right now, uh, are, are like their marquee characters. The ones that are super, super marketable. Um, especially with what they've done to some of their other big characters, like you know, Thor is not incredibly marketable at the moment. Uh, uh, Captain Thor re actually really is. Well, it is, but it's it, it's different, you know. I picked up the number one. I just want to. I figure if it if it stinks, then I'll get rid of it. But Jason Aaron did a good, re really good job writing Thor before, so I just figured it'd be worth a shot. I yeah. mean, it's going to be a different kind of story, though, because it's going to have to deal with... Uh, I forgot her name. Um, Jane Foster. She's got cancer, but she's also got, like, the hammer. Yeah, that's a pretty cool scenario. So I guess it's just she only turns into Thor when, when she picks up the hammer, I guess. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. But, I mean, there's this whole aspect dealing with her and her cancer. So she's got all this power, but she's still going to die. Like, I don't understand... Well, we'll be due for a Marvel update, actually, within probably a few, two or three weeks, probably three weeks. So, uh, you know, it'll give us a chance to read all the new stuff that, you know, because Marvel just put their new stuff out over the past month. And uh, we'll be able to update all of you vigilant geeks uh, on all that good stuff. So be on the lookout for that coming up very soon. Um, but let's get back to talking about just a few more of these uh Awesome sci-fi flicks here. Um, now, there was uh, an old school uh, sci-fi you wanted to discuss uh, from the 80s. Oh, Crawl. And Crawl. Crawl yeah, well, is so silly. Like, aliens land in, like, the, the distant, like, medieval ages, you know? 
Okay. And then this guy has got to go on a quest to save the princess, and he picks up this alien artifact called the Glaive and uses it to fight aliens. And he just like throws it, and it comes back to him. It's kind of like, uh, like the the boomerang in Zelda, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like. It just flies out, and it's got knives on it. It was now, just a really city 80s film. I have a question that does not pertain to Krull, but it's a question I need to ask because you just made me think of it when you talked about Zelda. Now, I recently saw this uh, editorial comic online of a time traveler's convention, and within the photo, you had, like, Marty McFly... Uh, who else for time travelers? But uh, Link was in the picture. Is Link a time traveler? He does sometimes. Huh. It's usually a different story. Like in, in Orcarina of Time, he did time travel. But like each game is about this own period of time with a different hero of for depending on what, what's needed. Like uh, in Wind Waker, it was the you were the hero of the wind, and it took place when like this, I don't know, post-apocalyptic. I don't even know if it's post-apocalyptic. A post-apocalyptic. Post-apocalyptic, yeah. Yeah, for for Hyrule, when everything's just in islands and you got to sail everywhere. Huh. Um. Apparently, all these are are part of this bigger timeline, and it's actually explained in the Hyrule Historia, which is this very thick, hardbound book. It's like thirty-five bucks, and it's like gives you the entire history and everything on Zelda. Oh, neat. I mean, it's really cool. I think you can get it cheaper on Amazon than you can get it at the store. At least that's how it used to be. I just never had anywhere to put it. I figure I might pick it up eventually. Yeah, that'd be a fun read. Interesting. Well, I'm glad I cleared that up. Uh, glad you were able to clear that up, rather, because I was curious about that. I said, oh, I, I wasn't sure. I didn't know Link was a was a time traveler. Uh, interesting. No, yeah, he definitely did some of that in the first game. Cool, cool. Uh, so anyways, back to Crawl. Yeah, um... Like the final scene, it's just him throwing the star at this giant alien, this like g- like giant blob thing, and then he kills it and he saves a princess. It's actually a pretty bad movie. I don't even know why I wanted it on the list. Well, sometimes bad movies can be worthy of uh, discussion. Discussion certainly, if yeah. uh, the, if if there's interesting aspects to them. So certainly, um. So yeah, I guess that brings us to Demolition Man, which is actually uh, a pretty interesting sci-fi in itself. Uh, old Sylvester Stallone movie, uh, Wesley Snipes plays. Wesley Snipes plays the bad guy. Yeah, and then Sandra Bullock is like the nerdy girl cop, you know, in... Yeah. I don't know, like the first thing that comes to my mind with that movie is like when... She asks Stallone to have sex, you know, and Stallone is just like, uh, oh, yeah, that'd be great. You know, yeah, let's have sex. Uh, that'd be wonderful. So then uh, she puts on like these headsets and then they start having like whatever the futuristic version of sex <laughs> is. But everything's like super clean. So like they don't like, exchange bodily fluids because they think it's gross. And, and like, oh, yeah, no, it's like what happens in the future once they've like completely made everyone completely docile. Yeah. Like a couple criminals from the past to get defrosted and they just go like alpha male on the entire society. Entire pussified society. And they're too they're like, oh, my God, this isn't nice. And everyone's saying that and no one knows how to fight back. And they're just being run over by these madmen. <laughs> Hurting people ain't a good thing. Well, I mean, sometimes it is, but not when it's someone that's just looking for something to eat. That's like <laughs> another line that I just happen to remember. That's like it. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you don't know how to use the seashells? The seashells, yeah, in the yeah. bathroom. Yeah, in the bathroom. They're looking at him like he's a dumb kid and... And then also, like, they're mean mugging him because he, like, if he didn't know how to use the seashells, then he clearly didn't wipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, sly. Yeah, I mean, for what it was, it was campy, but it was a good it was a good sci-fi movie. Yeah. I, I, I got a kick out of it. And then all the fast food chains had a war, and the one that won was, was Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Yeah. <laughs> so every restaurant from thereafter was named Taco Bell. Yeah, that was awesome, too. And then all the songs they listen to on the radio are commercials. Are commercials, like, like jingles to, like, you know, sell something, yeah. 
Oh, man. It was uh, one of those 90s classics. Yeah, I got to say, though, like, if that ended up becoming our future, that that would be pretty damn grim for, for someone like me. I'd go insane. Um, but, yeah, that was an interesting concept, to say the least. Um, moving on to a slightly more current uh, sci-fi event that occurred, I want to say... 2007 2008 uh in avatar james cameron i think no that came out in like 09 0, 010 oh yeah 010. okay <laughs> oh, i might have been off by a few years but but you, uh anyways no it was that's a very good flick i guess it was a really big deal when it came out um i remember the first time i ever saw it it was a pirated copy but it was like a decent pirated copy because I was, I was stuck overseas at the time and then I like, oh, this movie's great. Like I missed out on all the hype on this movie. Like everyone was losing their mind over it. Yeah. I guess the um, the CGI along with human being stuff, like the special effects were just gorgeous. And it looked like wicked good in 3D. And it's the story where this recon marine who is paralyzed from the waist down takes his bro- brother's twin brother's place on this program because his brother was killed. And they go to this moon of Pandora, which I believe is either Saturn or Jupiter. And on Pandora, there's wildlife and everything. And they interact with these tribal peoples, which are like 12 feet tall, like kitty monsters. And they're all living in the woods. And then they end up in a big mech fight. And it's a brawl. And they try to fight for who gets over the planet. Meanwhile, they, they, there's a corporation there that wants to tear open the planet to harvest this wicked rare min- mineral that's like worth a lot of money. Mm. So, I don't know. I've heard it compared as like dancing with Smurfs. It's kind of like dances with wolves, <laughs> only with like blue alien people. Neat. And everything was like the CGI. I remember it being like, you know, really incredible for when it came out. You know, it was just like one of those... Uh, uh, displays of CGI that just blew everyone away. It was a very, yeah. it's a very good movie. But, uh, that's the one that gave. Uh, I don't know. People started taking James Cameron seriously. I mean, he's done lots of great films, but that was like the first one in a long time. Yeah, I, I know he. You know, he did Titanic, right? He did. Yeah, and he did Terminator, and he's done a bunch of he's done a bunch of stuff. True but Lies. He did True Lies. True Lies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he hadn't really been in the limelight in a while and Avatar brought him back there. Certainly. Yeah. I think it was like over a billion dollars. It grossed. <coughs> I want to say it was top number one, but Jurassic Park, um, four Jurassic world. That one, that one was like the number one grossing movie of all time now. Really? Oh yeah. No, I mean it was good, but it was just like, all right, continue with mindless action from other Jurassic Parks. That didn't delve too deep about, like, part of the plot, but it's still awesome to see people being chased by dinosaurs. Yeah, people just get boners from dinosaurs, I guess. So. It was pretty good. They got Chris Pat going on there. Um, he was funny. I mean, I'd, I'd watch a couple more Jurassic Park movies. There's just some sort of strange appeal for me. I've always dug it ever since the first flick. first one was great. Yeah, oh, Spielberg directed that one. Yeah. And then I think he just produced the other ones, and then other people wrote it and directed it. Well, actually, actually, it was written by Michael Crichton, but I forget who adapted it. But yeah, Jurassic Park's fun. Like, what happens is they genetically engineer a dinosaur. It's actually the plot of kind of like a D horror movie, but it had a big budget and it did really, really well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they just slapped Jurassic Park on it. That's uh, cool. I forget what the name of this dinosaur is. That it's the one they genetically alter it with, like, uh, like a raptor and a T Rex, and it's got like longer arms than the T Rex, but it's big, so it's like this big raptor, and it's going on a killing spree on the island, and everyone's just losing their mind. Hmm. <laughs> like all the people are just like evacuating, like in enormous droves, and then there's like kids in the movie that become like main characters, and they're running from dinosaurs and. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's kind of sci-fi too, you know, genetic cloning and whatnot. Oh yeah, no, it qualifies, certainly. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I don't know, I think I might pick that up, honestly. Yeah, and there's so much out there that does qualify as sci-fi. And like I said, so much out there of quality that we were not able to go over today. But, I mean, we we did 
cover a lot of the cream of the crop, I feel. Um, let's see. There's one last film that we uh, are going to have to mention. Um Unfortunately, I had a bad experience with this movie. Uh, now, our uh, fellow analyst for Visual and Geek Media, Nathan Burke, uh, was going to kind of go over this, but uh, he had a prior engagement. So uh, I'm left with my commentary on 2001 Space Odyssey. That was a, a show that uh, you watch like B-movies and D-movies and then like these two fake robots up in the front row. It's like you're in a theater. They make fun of it. Um, I don't know if that was a show or something, but, but the, the movie isn't like that. Mystery. Oh, wait a minute. What was it? Maybe it's mystery. Um, mystery science theater. I think you're thinking of the robots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I I, I just heard that they're going to be rebooting that. Well, that'd be interesting. Yeah. So you're talking about something different. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. This was a Spielberg production actually. And, um, to be honest, I was like, incredibly disappointed like there's no dialogue first of all it's all like just images of like flying saucers and stuff which is kind of cool you know if you've got like a bag of weed with you and stuff but there's there's no I, I, there's nothing going on, you know, like it, it was just, it frustrated me. Um, I've only seen this movie once cause I felt no need to like watch it again, but, and I wish Nathan was here to clear this up, but, but from what I could see is just, you know, an hour and a half of just footage of like, you know, people like flying fake flying saucers around, you know, on a, a fake set or, or whatever, you know, like I didn't get anything out of it. There weren't really any characters. There wasn't really any dialogue. Um, it was just like images of space. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't sound very enthralling. <laughs> so I can't say anything good about it personally unless I go watch it again. And, 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 and if I find something different, maybe I can come back uh, next week and illuminate everyone. But as far as, as what I've seen so far, you know, watching that movie once, it was, you know... Yeah, he was a real pooper. So, um, but there you have it, folks. Uh, you know, we did discuss uh, numerous prominent sci-fi flicks today. Uh, some awesome, some not so great. Um, but uh, hopefully, uh, you know, this helps pertain to our sci-fi month and helps maybe uh, uh, give you guys some uh, good pointers as to some awesome sci-fi flicks to check out on your own. Uh, make sure to join us next week as we conclude sci-fi month with an epic Star Wars podcast. Uh, we're going to celebrate the Star Wars franchise as a whole uh, in preparation for uh, The Force Awakens, which is the new Star Wars film coming to theaters in December. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Star Wars comic books from Marvel. We are going to be talking about all the movies. We're going to be, it's going to be a Star Wars fest. Uh, myself and Holden will be here along with uh, New England stand up comic Nathan Burke and New England stand up comic Mark Gallagher. It's going to be a hell of a time. I uh, hope to see you all there. Uh, once again, uh, I am Andrew Puzak of Vigilant Geek Media. I'm Holden Orm of Vigilant Geek Media. And as always, stay, stay vigilant. vigilant.